Detroit police is uh, it's kind of chastising Brianna's law a little bit. If you're unfamiliar with what Brianna's law is, it bans no knock warrants uh, because that's how Brianna Taylor got murdered by the Louisville Police Department. And uh, and e- even though it like we have this law in place, we all know what happened. The grand jury in Louisville said, uh, well, we're going to let these officers go and we're going to maybe put this guy in prison for shooting a door because doors lives matter uh, too, according to that great jury. So, uh, but these no knock warrants are going uh, a viral, if you will. Right. A, a lot of places are, are adopting them. First of all, they should not even be a thing. No knock warrants. That's ridiculous. Um, busting into people's doors is illegal constitutionally. So, these police officers should immediately get a violation of the constitution. And then on top of that, they, they murdered a woman, an innocent woman. And the only, per, the only fucking conviction somebody gets is, uh, Hey, you shot a door, buddy. Huh? Did you think about that door's feelings? You son of a bitch. Aim better. You want to aim for the scary black people. Come on. We teach you that in the in the academy. So city council members in, in Pittsburgh, which is where I live, um, decided that they're going to put Brianna's law into effect, right? They're going to ban no-knock warrants. Now, this is getting a lot of heat from uh, Pittsburgh police who say, well, this is already banned in the state of Pennsylvania. No knock warrants are already banned in the state of Pennsylvania. And we all know that no time in history, even in recent history, have police officers been considered above the law like they're in a fucking Steven Seagal movie. That's never happened. It's not like they get away with murder all the time, proving that they are above the law and they even have the Supreme Court on their sides who won't overturn any qualified immunity cases and overturn qualified immunity, period. It's not like that's a reality we live in. Guys, come on. Cops are the good guys. They're here to protect and serve. Their cars say that. Why would they paint that on the cars if it wasn't true? Why would we have so many television programs like Blue Bloods and uh, NYPD Blue? A lot of blue. Uh, We get it. Officers are in blue. We understand it. Can we get something different? Can we do something different with the titles? That's why we have so many cop dramas out there where they're always the good guys and there's no gray. (laughs) There are a couple shows that address the gray. I'm, 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 I'm being hyperbolic being hyperbolic in this situation. I get it, right? Okay, Pennsylvania has banned no-knock warrants, but we have seen an overabundance um, of police brutality cases where where cops do illegal shit, end up killing minorities, and then getting away with murder for it. So now, this is more of a gestural thing to say we're adopting Brianna's law and we're going to make sure that if you do do a no knock warrant then then you are going to be tried under the law that you're not going to get you're not going to get sent to prison for wanton endangerment of shooting a fucking door or a wall or whatever inanimate fucking object uh you want to shoot because you missed the innocent black person so i disagree with the Pittsburgh police in this situation I think you guys should say, yeah, you know what? If you guys really gave a shit about any of this, you guys would say, yeah, you know what? Um, you're right. We have seen a lot of police violence. And uh, and as much as we don't want to continue seeing that anymore, and as much as we have this law in place to prevent that sort of stuff, as a gesture of goodwill, so that it shows us that we're listening to the people, so that we're sure that we're showing that we're paying attention to this cultural movement, the largest civil rights movement this side of the decade. We're going to say, okay, you're right. Let's put Brianna's law in place. 
uh, on top of the existing ban on no-knock warrants to ensure that this never happens again in any state. But instead, they were shitty about it. Like, oh my God, how dare you? Deep up. This is ridiculous. Hurting our feelings. Deep, deeply hurting our feelings, you jerks. I got a call the other day. Uh, some of you guys might know I take care of this elderly lady in the evenings uh, a few days a week. And, you know, sometimes the phone rings and it's, you she'll, she shouldn't talk to telemarketers. <laughs> She's sassy and fun and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but, you know, I don't want, no, she shouldn't be talking to telemarketers. But one of the telemarketers called. And it was a uh, fraternal order of police, right? Which when I was a kid, uh, those I would forward those calls to my, my parents, but I'd be very excited, right? Because, oh man, police officers, they're the good guys. And, and you know, when I was like four or five, I wanted to be a police officer because one of my neighbors was a cop. Uh, like my best friend's dad when I was four was a cop. And I was like, oh, this is so cool. You get to ride a motorcycle all the time. This is great. You know, and then you grow older and you're like, well, okay, uh, no, all right, they're, they are originated from slave patrols. <laughs> Maybe I don't want to be a part of this racist organization. Um, Fraternal Order of Police is also not an awesome organization. Uh, they've come out and basically said we don't need mental health uh, for cops. The the the, the mental health and, and therapy for cops is a shot and a beer. Uh, so great. Alcoholism is is their mental health program, according to the Fraternal Order of Police in Philadelphia. Uh, that's fun. Because drunk cops, not a bad thing, right? Drunk cops, they're fun. Oh, they bust into parties. They're doing keg stands. So, <laughs> so he talks to me and, he, and and I go, you know, I answer the phone and they're like, hey, is the head of the household available? And I was like, what is this in regards to? And then they immediately go into the spiel. And the spiel starts with, well, with everything with the defund the police movement, now is the time our police departments are in danger. They're in danger, you guys. <laughs> and immediately I go, yeah, I'm not interested. And he goes, what? And I was like, I'm not interested. And he goes, well, wait a minute. And then he starts continuing his fucking spiel. I had I had half a mind. I There was another incoming call that I had to take, but this dude just wouldn't stop. So it was like a moment of total chaos, but I really want to look at him and be like, yo, NYPD gets $6 billion. Defunding them even a third of what they have means that they get four fucking billion dollars in their budget. Do you know what we could do with $4 billion right fucking now? We could feed everybody in this country. With $6 billion, we could take care of everybody's rent for a while. The Pittsburgh police gets more than enough fucking money that I don't need to donate to it. What I will donate to is mutual aids. What I will donate to are grassroots organizations. What I will donate to are, are POC and LGBTQ plus collectives that are doing on the ground community workshops to ensure that you know, minorities aren't fucking getting killed on the streets. And if they have a mental health breakdown, they have a fucking place to go. So cops don't get called and shoot them. That's what I'll fucking donate to. Nobody's fucking above the law, and Pittsburgh police should be should be get, saying yes. Okay, let's do let's you know put Brianna's law in place. We sure we have a, a no knock ban, but in order to double down on it, yeah, we'll show you a solidarity and support this law. But they but they won't. They're showing you that they believe that they are absolutely above the fucking law. That's what they've shown us. That's why you can't trust the cops. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button, hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook especially Facebook and YouTube, 
they often uncensor people, uh, un unsubscribe people, and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, uh, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of uh, of various shows that I uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows, the Forkful of Noodles live virtual comedy shows. Uh, the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website. But if you're also on financial stable ground, you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets and bonus content. And go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to, to make any kind of financial contributions. But if you can't, it's not a necessity. Most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H -H -A, and I hope to see you at the next video.